just watch the first part of our video series for nursing interview questions and comprehensive answers. In part 1, we examine various important nursing related questions and provide detailed explanations and responses to help you prepare effectively for your nursing job interviews. Don't miss this valuable resource to improve your interview skills and boost your confidence as you pursue a successful nursing career. Link in description. What are the primary complications associated with lower segment cesarean section, LSCS? Lower segment cesarean section, LSCS, commonly known as C-section, is a surgical procedure performed to deliver a baby through an incision made in the lower abdomen and uterus. While LSCS is generally considered safe, it does carry some potential complications, including Infection, the surgical site or the uterus may become infected after the procedure, leading to wound infections or uterine infections, endometritis. Hemorrhage, excessive bleeding during or after the surgery can occur and may require blood transfusions or additional interventions to control. Blood clots, women undergoing LSCS are at an increased risk of developing blood clots in their legs, deep vein thrombosis, or lungs, pulmonary embolism. Adverse reactions to anesthesia. Rarely, some women may experience allergic reactions or adverse effects from anesthesia used during the procedure. Uterine rupture. In subsequent pregnancies, there is a small risk of the previous uterine scar opening during labor. Uterine rupture, which can be life-threatening. Injury to organs, damage to nearby organs, such as the bladder or intestines, can occur during the surgery. Wound complications. Poor wound healing, wound separation or the formation of excessive scar tissue, keloids, can occur at the incision site. Complications for future pregnancies, LSCS may impact future pregnancies and increase the risk of placenta-related issues such as placenta previa or placenta accreta. What are the congenital defects? Congenital defects, also known as congenital anomalies or birth defects, are structural or functional abnormalities present at birth. These conditions can affect various parts of the body and may range from mild to severe. Congenital defects can result from genetic factors, environmental exposures during pregnancy, or a combination of both. Some common congenital defects include Heart defects, structural abnormalities in the heart, such as ventricular septal defects, VST, atrial septal defects, AST, or congenital heart valve abnormalities. Neural tube defects, malformations of the brain, spine, or spinal cord, such as spina bifida or anencephaly. Cleft lip and palate, a gap or split in the upper lip or roof of the mouth, which can occur separately or together. Down syndrome, a chromosomal disorder caused by the presence of an extra copy of chromosome 21, leading to intellectual disability and certain physical features. Limb defects, missing, underdeveloped or abnormal limbs such as missing fingers or toes or limb length discrepancies. Clubfoot, a deformity in which the foot is turned inward and downward. Chromosomal abnormalities, conditions resulting from changes in the number or structure of chromosomes such as Turner syndrome or Klinefelter syndrome. Hydrocephalus, an accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain causing enlargement of the head. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia, a defect in the diaphragm, allowing organs from the abdomen to move into the chest cavity. Gastroschisis and omphalocele, abdominal wall defects in which the intestines or other organs protrude outside the body. Congenital hearing loss, partial or complete hearing impairment present at birth. What is eclampsia? Eclampsia is a serious and life-threatening complication of pregnancy characterized by seizures that occur in a woman with preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is a condition that typically develops after the 20th week of pregnancy and is characterized by high blood pressure, hypertension, and signs of organ damage, often affecting the liver and kidneys. If preeclampsia is not promptly and adequately managed, it can progress to eclampsia. What is PPH? Postpartum hemorrhage. PPH postpartum hemorrhage refers to excessive bleeding that occurs after childbirth. It is one of the leading causes of maternal morbidity and mortality worldwide. PPH is classified as either primary, within 24 hours of delivery, or secondary, between 24 hours and 6 weeks post-delivery. What are the causes of stomach pain? Stomach pain, also known as abdominal pain, can have various causes, 
and it's essential to identify the specific symptoms, location, and characteristics of the pain to determine the underlying cause accurately. Some common causes of stomach pain include gastroenteritis, infection or inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract, often caused by viruses or bacteria. Gastric ulcers, open sores that develop on the lining of the stomach. Gallstones, solid particles that form in the gallbladder and can cause pain when they block the bile ducts. Appendicitis, inflammation of the appendix, usually requiring immediate medical attention. Irritable bowel syndrome, IBS a functional gastrointestinal disorder characterized by abdominal pain, bloating, and changes in bowel habits. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, GRD a condition where stomach acid flows back into the esophagus, causing heartburn and pain. Pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas, often associated with severe abdominal pain. Inflammatory bowel disease, IBD chronic conditions that cause inflammation in the digestive tract, such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. What is intubation? Intubation is a medical procedure in which a flexible tube, known as an endotracheal tube, is inserted into a patient's airway to maintain an open passage for breathing. It is commonly performed in critical care settings, such as in the intensive care unit, ICU, or during surgery, to support patients who are unable to breathe adequately on their own. What is CPR? CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. It is an emergency life-saving procedure performed when a person's heart has stopped beating or is in cardiac arrest. CPR involves chest compressions and rescue breaths to maintain blood flow and oxygenation to vital organs until advanced medical help arrives. What do you know about VIP score? The VIP score, also known as the vasoactivinotropic score, is a numerical scoring system used in critical care medicine to assess the severity of a patient's hemodynamic instability and their response to vasoactive and inotropic medications. It is commonly used in the intensive care unit, ICU, to guide the management of patients with circulatory shock or low blood pressure. The VIP score is calculated by adding the doses of specific vasoactive and inotropic medications that a patient is receiving. The medications typically included in the VIP score are Dopamine, a medication that increases heart rate and blood pressure. Epinephrine, adrenaline a potent medication that increases heart rate and blood pressure. Norpinephrine, noradrenaline a medication that increases blood pressure and constricts blood vessels. Vasopressin, a hormone and medication that helps regulate blood pressure and fluid balance. Dobutamine, a medication that increases heart contractility and cardiac output. What are the common instruments and equipment used in the intensive care unit, ICU? The intensive care unit, ICU, is a specialized medical setting that requires a range of instruments and equipment to monitor and support critically ill patients. Some common instruments and equipment used in the ICU include Patient monitors, these devices continuously monitor vital signs such as heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate, and oxygen saturation. Ventilators, mechanical ventilators provide breathing support to patients who are unable to breathe adequately on their own. Infusion pumps, infusion pumps are used to administer medications, fluids, and nutrition through intravenous, four, lines at controlled rates. Defibrillators, defibrillators deliver an electric shock to restore a normal heart rhythm in patients experiencing cardiac arrhythmias or cardiac arrest. Arterial lines, Arterial catheters allow continuous monitoring of blood pressure and blood gas levels in critically ill patients. Central venous catheters, these large bore 4 catheters are placed in central veins to monitor central venous pressure and deliver medications or fluids. Pulse oximeters, pulse oximeters measure the oxygen saturation of blood non-invasively, usually by attaching a sensor to a finger or ear lobe. Electrocardiogram, ECG, EKG, machines, ECG machines record the electrical activity of the heart to monitor heart rhythm and detect abnormalities. Intracranial pressure, ICP, monitoring, ICP monitoring devices measure pressure inside the skull for patients with traumatic brain injuries or neurological conditions. Feeding pumps, feeding pumps deliver enteral nutrition to patients who cannot eat orally. Suction machines, suction machines are used to clear secretions from the airway of ventilated patients. Hemodynamic monitoring systems, these systems measure and assess cardiovascular parameters, such as cardiac output and pulmonary artery pressure. 
Can you explain Glasgow Coma Scale? The Glasgow Coma Scale, GCS, is a neurological assessment tool used to evaluate a patient's level of consciousness and neurological function. It assesses three components, eye-opening, verbal response, and motor response. The GCS score ranges from 3 to 15, with lower scores indicating a more severe impairment of consciousness. Eye-opening response, scores range from 1, no response, to 4, spontaneous eye-opening. Verbal response, scores range from 1, no verbal response, to 5, oriented and conversing. Motor response, scores range from 1, no motor response, to 6, obeying commands. The total GCS score is calculated by adding the scores from the three components, with the highest possible score being 15, fully conscious, and the lowest being 3, deep coma. What is range of hypercalcemia? Hypercalcemia refers to a higher than normal level of calcium in the blood. The normal range of totals. What is range of hypercalcemia? Hypercalcemia refers to a higher than normal level of calcium in the blood. The normal range of total serum calcium is typically around 8.5 to 10.5 mg per deciliter, NGDL or 2.1 to 2.62 millimoles per liter, mol L. Hypercalcemia is generally considered to be present when serum calcium levels exceed 10.5 mg DL, 2.6 to mol L. What is normal range of sodium? The normal range of serum sodium levels in the blood is usually between 135 to 145 milliequivalents per liter, MEQL. It's essential to maintain proper sodium levels as they play a critical role in maintaining fluid balance and nerve function in the body. What is anemia? Anemia is a medical condition characterized by a decrease in the number of red blood cells or a deficiency of hemoglobin in the blood. This results in reduced oxygen carrying capacity, leading to symptoms such as fatigue, weakness, pale skin, and shortness of breath. Anemia can be caused by various factors, including nutritional deficiencies, chronic diseases, blood loss, or underlying health conditions. Treatment depends on the specific cause and may include iron supplements, vitamin B12 injections, or addressing the underlying condition. What is code blue? Code blue is a hospital emergency code used to indicate a medical emergency requiring immediate resuscitation and intervention. Typically for a patient in cardiac arrest or experiencing a life-threatening event. When a code blue is called, a team of healthcare providers, including doctors, nurses, and respiratory therapists, respond urgently to provide advanced life support and attempt to revive the patient. The goal of a code blue is to quickly initiate life-saving measures and restore the patient's vital functions. What are the common normal values of lab tests? Normal values for lab tests can vary depending on the specific test being performed and the laboratory's reference range. Reference ranges are typically established by each laboratory and may vary slightly between different healthcare facilities. It's important to note that the following values are general guidelines and may not be applicable to every situation. Always consult a healthcare professional for an accurate interpretation of lab test results. Here are some common lab test normal values. Complete blood count, CBC. Blood glucose. Serum electrolytes. Liver function tests. Kidney function tests. Lipid profile. Thyroid function tests. Please remember that these are general reference ranges and may differ slightly depending on the laboratory and the specific testing methods used. Always consult with a healthcare professional to interpret your lab test results and discuss their significance in the context of your overall health. What do you know about ventilator? A ventilator, also known as a mechanical ventilator or a respirator, is a medical device used to assist patients with breathing when they are unable to do so adequately on their own. Ventilators are commonly used in various medical settings, including intensive care units, ICUs, operating rooms, and emergency departments. Key features and functions of a ventilator include Assisted breathing, ventilators deliver oxygen-rich air into a patient's lungs and remove carbon dioxide, supporting gas exchange during both inhalation and exhalation. Pressure or volume control, ventilators can be set to deliver breaths based on a predetermined pressure or volume, depending on the patient's condition and needs.
Modes of ventilation. Different modes of ventilation allow healthcare providers to adjust the pattern and timing of breaths to match the patient's specific respiratory requirements. Positive end expiratory pressure. Peep peep is a setting that keeps the airways open at the end of exhalation, improving oxygen exchange and preventing lung collapse. Monitoring capabilities. Modern ventilators have various sensors and monitors that display real-time data on patient parameters, including tidal volume, respiratory rate, and oxygen saturation. Alarms. Ventilators are equipped with alarms that alert healthcare providers to changes in the patient's condition or any issues with the equipment. Non-invasive ventilation. Some ventilators support non-invasive ventilation methods, such as using a mask or nasal prongs, which can be beneficial for certain patients. Ventilators play a critical role in the management of patients with respiratory failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPT, and other conditions affecting breathing. They provide life-saving support and allow time for the patient's underlying condition to improve. What are X-rays? And different types of X-rays? X-rays, also known as radiographs, are a common diagnostic imaging tool used in medicine to visualize internal structures of the body. Different types of X-rays are used depending on the area of the body being examined and the specific diagnostic purpose. Some of the common types of X-rays include Chest X-ray, CXR used to visualize the lungs, heart and surrounding structures. It helps diagnose conditions such as pneumonia, lung cancer, and heart abnormalities. Abdominal X-ray, used to visualize the abdomen and its contents, including the stomach, intestines, and organs like the liver, spleen, and kidneys. It may be used to diagnose bowel obstructions or detect abdominal injuries. Skeletal X-rays, these include various types of X-rays to visualize bones and joints. Examples include A. Hand and wrist x-rays, used to assess bone fractures, arthritis, or developmental abnormalities. B. Spine x-rays, used to evaluate the vertebrae and spinal alignment, helpful for diagnosing conditions like scoliosis or disc herniation. C. Hip x-rays, used to assess hip joint health, detect fractures, or diagnose hip arthritis. D. Knee X-rays, used to evaluate knee joint integrity and diagnose conditions like osteoarthritis or ligament injuries. E. Foot and ankle X-rays, used to assess foot and ankle bones, joints, and fractures. Dental X-rays, specifically used to visualize teeth, jaw bones, and surrounding structures. Dental X-rays include bitewing X-rays, periapical X-rays, and panoramic X-rays. Fluoroscopy a real-time imaging technique that provides continuous X-ray images to visualize moving body structures, such as the gastrointestinal tract during a barium swallow or the movement of joints during arthrography. Sinus X-ray, used to visualize the sinuses to diagnose sinusitis or other sinus-related conditions. Intravenous pilogram, IVP a special type of X-ray used to visualize the kidneys, ureters, and bladder by injecting a contrast light. Mammography, a specialized X-ray used to screen and diagnose breast abnormalities, including breast cancer. Each type of X-ray serves a specific diagnostic purpose and helps healthcare professionals visualize and assess different areas of the body to aid in the diagnosis of various medical conditions. Can you explain International Patient Safety Goal? The International Patient Safety Goals, IPSG, are a set of guidelines and initiatives developed by the World Health Organization, WHO to enhance patient safety in healthcare settings globally. These goals aim to address specific areas of patient safety concern and promote consistent, standardized practices to prevent medical errors and adverse events. The IPSGs included the following areas. Goal 1. Identify patients correctly. Ensuring accurate patient identification to prevent errors in medication administration, procedures, and other aspects of care. Goal 2. Improve effective communication. Enhancing communication among healthcare providers and with patients to avoid misunderstandings and errors. Goal 3. Improve the safety of high alert medications. Implementing measures to reduce errors related to high-risk medications. Goal 4. Ensure safe surgery. Implementing safety protocols before, during, and after surgical procedures to prevent surgical errors. 
Goal 5. Reduce the risk of healthcare-associated infections. Implementing infection prevention and control measures to reduce the incidence of healthcare-associated infections. Goal 6. Reduce patient harm from falls. Implementing fall prevention strategies to reduce the risk of patient falls in healthcare settings. Goal 7. Encourage patient engagement. Promoting patient involvement in the care and decision-making to improve patient safety. How do you handle a situation where a patient refuses to take medication or follow the treatment plan? In such cases, I first try to understand the reason for their refusal through open communication. I address their concerns and provide information about the importance of the medication or treatment. If necessary, I involve the healthcare team to explore alternative solutions while respecting the patient's autonomy and choices. How do you handle stressful or emotionally challenging situations while caring for patients? I understand that nursing can be emotionally demanding. To cope with stress, I practice self-care and utilize mindfulness techniques. Additionally, I seek support from colleagues and engage in regular debriefing sessions to process challenging situations effectively. Tell us about a situation where you had to deal with a difficult or uncooperative patient and how did you handle it? In one instance, I had a patient who was agitated and uncooperative due to pain and anxiety. I approached the patient with empathy, actively listened to their concerns, and explained the care plan in a calm and understanding manner. I involved the patient in decision-making and sought support from the healthcare team to address their needs. My patience and communication skills helped build trust, and eventually, the patient became more cooperative.